Yeah. The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camel stay fresh and cool smoking because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's special guest, Miss Claire Trevor, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello. Hey, come here, you. Where have you been for the last three or four days? Uh-oh. Where have you been, Lou? I've been looking all over for you. Oh, well, I've been up to my Uncle Artie Stebbins' ranch. I was picking vegetables. I'm helping with the labor shortage of it. That, that's very commendable, Costello. Oh, sure. Yes, oh, that's me. I can see you. Yes, that I, I hey, Abbott, everybody's helping out. Yes, you should. And there was even a bunch of sailors working up there with me. Uh, sailors picking vegetables? Yeah, what a sight. It's the first time I ever saw sailors picking up tomatoes without whistling at them. <laughs> Who else was up at the ranch besides you? Oh, I had a lot of beautiful movie stars up there with me, Abbott. You did? I had Dorothy Lamour. I had Betty Grable. Mm. They were working in the potato patch. Yes? But we had to make them stop. Why? The potatoes were coming up baked. <laughs> Costello, uh, isn't that ranch life a little strenuous for you? Oh, you said it. Every morning I get up at 4 a.m. and I milk the cows with my left hand. You milk the cows with your left hand? Sure. That's my old cow hand. Oh, I... <laughs> That's my old cow hand. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just turn. I'd like I'm to... real Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Lou, Lou, Lou. I'd like to see you getting up at 4 in the morning. Uh, wasn't it dark? Oh, dark. When I got up this morning, it was so dark that me and my Uncle Artie started milking the same cow. You both tried to milk the same cow? Yep. There I was, on the left side of the cow's crack case, milking away. And my Uncle Stebbins was on the right side, when suddenly I felt something pulling my fingers. That's strange. I'll say, I squeezed many a cow in my day, but that's the first time a cow ever squeezed me. <laughs> Costello, do you realize, while you were out of town, the man from your draft board was looking for you? I know he was, and he found me, too. He walked up to me while I was milking that cow, and he tapped me on the shoulder. Mm, what did he say? He said, young man... Why aren't you at the front? And what did you say? I said, because there ain't any milk on that end. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Ken Niles. Hello, Ken. Well, I see the fat boy's back. Where's Costello been all week? Oh, he just got back from his Uncle Stebbins' farm. Oh, the farm, mm -hmm. huh? I suppose he brought back a load of corn for the program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hilarious. I'd like to take you up to the farm. My Uncle Stebbins could use a man like you in a score field. He could? Yeah, his scarecrow. Scarecrow was drafted. <laughs> Costello, why do you always try to match wits with Ken Niles? He's a college man. That's I right, know, Costello. I yes, I am a college man. I was a cheerleader at Southern California. I was the first cheerleader to have the students stand up and form the letters USC. Oh, I remember that. You were the one in the middle. You made a S out of yourself. Uh, <laughs> cut that out, Costello. <laughs> cut it out. Ah, right. uh, good old USC. That's where I met my little wife. She was studying to be an etymologist. Studying to be a what? An etymologist. Yes, Costello, that's a person who goes around chasing little bugs. Oh, you mean she was a chambermaid. <laughs> Costello, how can you say that about a beautiful woman like Mrs. Niles? Beautiful woman? You heard me. The last time I saw a face like that was on a bottle of iodine. <laughs> oh, I heard that remark, Costello. Well, what are you sneaking in for? Where have you been, Mrs. Niles? I'll have you know I just came from a plastic surgeon. Was the place closed? <laughs> the plastic surgeon spent two hours lifting my face. You look like he was interrupted. <laughs> Costello, I think he did a beautiful job. That was no job. That was a project. <laughs> Listen, Costello, there's nothing I can do about my face. I can't help the way it looks. Well, you could stay home. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to go roaming around. All right, all right, don't... Don't pay any attention to Costello, Mrs. Niles. He's all puffed up because he did a little work on his uncle's farm over the weekend. Yep, Mrs. Niles, I'm a big outdoor man. Yes, I know. Every time I get close to you, I realize that you belong outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you certainly told Costello off that time, dear. No. Oh, you make me feel like I'm floating on air. Oh, no, Ted, if you make me feel like I'm floating on air. Oh, but I insist, dear, I'm floating on air. <laughs> 
say that I'm floating on air. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from a couple of old gas bags. <laughs> Costello, what's the matter with you? you hey, said... I made it! Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You should have more respect for Mrs. Niles. Don't you realize that Sunday is Mother's Day? Gee, yeah, but that's right. I almost forgot. I even wrote a beautiful poem. I dedicated the poem to you, Mrs. Niles. A poem for me, Costello? Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Go ahead and read it for me. Okay. It is entitled, To Mrs. Niles at Springtime. Here I go. Lilacs blooming on the hill Give my heart a springtime thrill You are the master I am a slave Yes, yes, go on You are master, I am slave Go scrape your pen with Burma shade Get him out of here <laughs> I'm a failure, Pat, a failure. Look at this. A survey from the town of Wump, Nevada. In Wump, no one, no one is looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many he smokes. Oh, dear. No one? No one. In Wump, everyone smokes camels. Everybody just goes around with a happy expression, knowing that camel cigarettes have more flavor because they're expertly blended of costlier tobacco. Well, 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 what's bad about that, Kenneth? In the middle of Wump's main street, there's a statue with a T in its face, like, like in the camel land. And in Wump, everybody has tried camels in his taste and throat, the tea's own proving ground for camels' rich extra flavor and smooth extra mildness. Well, then why are you crying, Kenneth? And of course, they all know that in Wump, just as everywhere, camel cigarettes are fresh and cool smoking because they're packed to go around the world. Oh, well, then stop crying, Kenneth. I'm a failure. I'm a failure. Everyone in Wump hears the Abbott and Costello show, but the survey shows that only 85 people know that Abbott and Costello are sponsored by camels. Only 85. Only 85. Now, Kenneth. Oh, Kenneth, look. Oh. It says here the population of one is 72. Well, well, what do you know? Freddie Rich and the orchestra play an old favorite, the way you look tonight. Come back here, Costello. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going back to my Uncle Hugo's ranch. But uh, what are you doing with those boxing gloves on? I'm in my Uncle Artie Stebbins' ranch. I always forget my Uncle Artie Stebbins. Uh, what'd you say? I say, what are you doing with those boxing gloves on? Oh, my uncle wants me to help him punch cows. Oh. Yuck, yuck, oh. yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh, 
no. What a no. lot. You're staying right here in town. Mm-hmm. Now, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Mrs. Miles just called, and they need a lot of help over at Bigglebottom's department store. Oh, Bigglebottom. Yes. My cousin, Cuckoo Louie. He's a store detective there. Look, here's a picture of him. Wearing his badge. My goodness. He's very cross-eyed. Yep. How could he be a detective? Are you kidding? Take a good look at the picture. Yeah. Can you tell who he's watching? No. <laughs> uh, come in. Pardon me, ladies. My name is Jock McGregor. Was your mother ever frightened by a riveter? <laughs> you cannot say that to a McGregor. Watch out, brother. You're going to strip your gear. Uh, quiet, Costello. <laughs> what can we do for you, Mr. McGregor? Well, if you didn't mind, I'd like to say a few words uh, in your microphone. Hey, Eric, in order for me to talk to this guy, I'll have to practice up on my scotch. Rip, 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 rip. All right, lady. And it's a bray, brick, mullick, nick, to nick. Jerk, jock. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Mother. This is your son, Jack. Uh, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And try to get here from New York if you can. I know you didn't want to spend the money for the fair, so walk down the road a ways. You might be fortunate enough to get yourself kidnapped by gypsies and save the cost of transportation. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? I'm talking to my mother in New York. Uh, but, Jack, that's crazy. She can't talk back to you on the radio. How do you expect to get an answer? You know worry, lad. She'll answer me next week on Fred Allen's program. <laughs> yeah, brother. Oh, will you keep those guys out of here, Rabbit? Well, you see, Costello, everybody's thinking of Mother's Day. The stores will be crowded, so let's go over to Beagle Bottoms and give Mrs. Niles a hand. Okay. All right, Costello. Here's the employment office. Now, if we want to go to work in this department, this department store, you will have to fill out this application blank. Now, let's see. Here's the first question. What's your name? Luke Costello. You know that. Hey, yes, yes, I know. Uh, born? Born? Certainly! <laughs> I think my folks got me with a ration coupon. Oh, all right, all right. Talk sense. Now, um, what day were you born? Thursday. Uh, how do you know it was Thursday? Of course, the next day we had fish. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's skip your birthday. You always do. You never give me nothing. Yeah, never mind that. Now, uh, how much do you weigh? I don't remember, Abbott. Well, what did the little card say the last time you got on the scale? It said, you will take a trip over water. And what happened? I fell in a sore. Oh. <laughs> Stop this nonsense. Now, we've got to get this application filled out. Now, let's see. We have height, weight. Oh, here's the next question. Hair. Hair? What do you think this is on my head? Broccoli? Uh, no, I mean, I mean the color of your hair. It's hard to tell the color because your hair is very thin. My hair is thin? Yes. So what? Who wants fat hair? No, look. <laughs> don't be stupid. Here's another question. While working in the store and you happen to have an accident, whom do you wish notified? Me. I want to be the first to know. All right. <laughs> do you have any mark of identification? Yes, sir. I got a hole in my left stocking. Here, you want to see it, Abbott? No, 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 no. Come on, sure. take a look All at right, it. All right, shut up. Come on. Quiet. Come on, we can play this little all piggy. All right, quiet, please, please, please. Uh, that's all the questions except for your education. Uh, did you go to school? Oh, sure, I went to school. Seems like only yesterday that I was in the fourth grade. When were you in the fourth grade? Yesterday. Oh. <laughs> ah, good morning, boys. Is there something I can do for you? I'm Mr. Plushface, the manager, you know. Yes, we're Abbott and Costello. Mrs. Niles said you needed some help for uh, the Mother's Day sale. Yes, well, have you boys had any experience working in stores? Yes, sir. I used to be a credit manager. Where? At the 5 and 10. (laughs) But they fired me. Why? I couldn't remember the prices. (laughs) Oh, well, we're so short of help, we can even use a moron these days. Now, Mr. Costello, just step up behind the tra- training counter here, and we'll try out... Give it up. You'll make it, kid. Yes. <laughs> now, now, you be the salesman, and I'll be the customer. Now, here I come. Good morning, clerk. How much are your bathing cap? Uh, Fifty cents. Fifty cents? Aren't you a little dear? Yes, I am. And you're kind of cute yourself. Now. <laughs> cut, yes, it out, are, Costello, cut, cut it out, Costello. Cut it out. Here I come again. Look, how much are your bathing cap? Fifty cents. Isn't that a little expensive? Sure they are. You can get them across the street for a time. No, 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 no. <laughs> Costello, don't tell the customer that. Try it again, uh, Mr. Plushface. All right. Here I come once more. Good morning, clerk. Oh, back again, eh? No, no, no. You've never seen me before. Oh, yes, I have. I never forget a face. Especially a puss like a yours. Uh, no, 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 no. Never mind that, Costello. He wants to buy a bathing cap. 
he? I told you he was in here before. No. This is ridiculous. Let's switch around. Now, I'll be the salesman and you be the customer. Now, you go out that very door and I'll sell you a bathing cap for 50 cents. But I can get him across the street for a dime. Hey, Costello, go out that door and come in again. Okay. And remember, you're buying a bathing cap. Okay. Here I go. Good morning, sir. What do you want? I don't want anything. <laughs> then what did you come in here for? It's raining outside. <laughs> Listen. You want a bathing cap. Oh, no, it ain't raining that hard. Oh, what a dummy. Costello, go out that door and come in again. You've got to buy a bathing cap. Okay, if you say so. All right, Costello, come in again. Costello! Costello, did you hear the man? Come in again. Hello? Beagle Bottoms Department Store. Hello! Hello! This yes? is Lou Costello. Well, for heaven's sake, Costello, where are you? In the drugstore. What are you doing over there? Buying a bathing cap for a dime. I give up. I give up. Donnie Haynes brings a lovely new ballad. Good night, wherever you are. Good night, wherever you are. May your dreams be pleasant. If only one little wish that I wish come true, I know that the angels will watch over you. Good night, wherever you are, I'll be with you dear, no matter the front line, now part of the supply line, is Tarawa, Gilbert Island stronghold of the United Nations. To Americans on Tarawa, the United States bases and outposts throughout the world go camel cigarettes. By the million, by the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services, according to actual sales records. Fresh camels on all the United States held islands of the Pacific mean fresh camels around your corner, too. If you want a fresh cigarette and cool smoking, get camels. They stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Both at home and overseas, more people want camels. The fresh cigarette. The cigarette with more flavor. So remember, if your store is sold out, camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. <laughs> Say, you know, Costello, it certainly was nice of Mrs. Niles to get us a job in this department store. Yeah, we've been pretty busy, too, Abbott. Hey, how much money have we taken in so far? Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. That's enough for us. Now we can start working for the store. <laughs> Come on, boys. Get busy, get busy. Oh, it's Mrs. Niles. Quit loitering behind that counter and wait on the customers. Oh, and while I'm here, I think I'll use my employee's discount and buy myself a pair of slacks. A pair of slacks, eh? You take size 52, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. How could you tell? I used to make saddles for sea biscuits. <laughs> oh. oh, 
Oh, no wonder you haven't sold anything all morning. Now, I'm going to give you one more chance. Here comes our store's most important customer. Uh, she's that lovely screen star, Miss Claire Trevor. <laughs> Hello, boys. Can you take care of me? Can we? We can. we can! If you two guys don't jump back over that counter, I'll call the store detective. Now, let's make with the shopping. My boyfriend opened up a charge account for me. He's got plenty of dough. Made it in oil. Crude? Never with me. <laughs> you misinterpreted me! I doubt it. You doubt it? Yes. Now, okay. look, I want to get him a nice present. He's 82 years old. 82 years old? Yes. Why don't you get him a bowl? A bowl? Yes, something to soak his bread in. <laughs> take it easy, Costello. Do you... Take it easy. Hey, take it easy. You want to get us fired? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, Miss Trevor. Yes. Could we interest you in some uh, perfume for your mother for Mother's Day? Say, now, that's an idea. Have you got Cody's sheep? Have we got what? Cody's sheep. No, ma'am, but we got McCarty's goat. <laughs> I think we better skip the perfume. Oh, come on, Miss Trevor. Why don't you try a little squirt? You don't appeal to me. <laughs> you are misinterpreting me. I don't think so. Uh, I think so. All right, Miss Trevor, uh, try this perfume here. It's our most expensive brand. $90 an ounce. Oh, let me smell it. <sighs> hmm. I'll take 50 cents worth. <laughs> You've just whiffed. Two dollars worth. <laughs> and stuck in an extra whip. I don't know why. All right, now, will you shut up, Costello, so I can make a sale? Miss Trevor, maybe we could interest you in a gift for a serviceman. Now, that's an idea. What would you suggest for a sailor about 35? A blonde, about 21. <laughs> oh, look, boys, I can't stay in the store all day. I'd like to get something for myself. You know, something snappy. Something snappy? Yes. Yeah. Real snappy? Mm hmm Would you like a turtle or a girdle? <laughs> You don't understand. Do you have any notion? Oh, I have my moments. <laughs> Pardon me, miss. Now, look here, you two clerks. What kind of a department are you running here? Look at those messy shelves. Look at that stuff strewn all over the counter. Why can't you be neat and tidy? This place is so sloppy that I can hardly stand to look at it. Well, if you don't like the way we're doing, why don't you fire it? I can't. I don't even work here. <laughs> That fellow is right. Now, I'm going to get somebody with a brain to wait on me. Just a second, Miss Trevor. I am not used to getting brushed off. You've no idea how much it would improve your appearance. <laughs> you are a fresh day. Costello. You are a... You, a, a, you a, 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 Please, remember our jobs. Uh, suppose we look around the store, Miss Trevor. All right. I think I'll do some shopping on the upper floors. Okay. Follow me to the escalator. No, no, no. You mean escalator. <laughs> you know what an oscillator is. It's a person who wants to kiss all the time. Follow me, babe, but don't ask any questions. <laughs> Never mind him, Miss Trevor. Let's take this elevator. Step right in, please. Up and down. What else have you got? <laughs> take me up to the 20th floor, please. Garden all out. <laughs> Costello. Costello, where are you? Are you back? Yes. Yeah. See this flag, Paul? Yes. The flag is me. <laughs> oh, slide down and I'll catch you. Okay. Now what happened? I am now a half man. <laughs> For goodness sake, where's Miss Trevor? Miss Trevor, are you in the elevator? In it. I'm wearing it. Look, will you please take me down to the seventh floor? Go on down. <laughs> oh. What's the matter, Miss Trevor? Did we come down too fast for you? Oh, no. I always wear my girdle around my neck. <laughs> uh, step this way, Miss Trevor. Here's our fur department. Uh, can we show you something? Well, I don't know. Have you got um, a spotted leopard? No. But we got a dirty mink. <laughs> Wait a minute, Costello. Hey, here. I have an idea. Now, there's something that looks nice. Go ahead and grab that little number over there. <laughs> Wrong number. <laughs> hey, uh, Miss Trevor, mm. here's a beautiful fur coat you'd like. What in the world is that? That's genuine weasel with built-in mothballs. <laughs> Costello, 
Did your mother ever have any children that lived? No, ma'am. We just... <laughs> now, boys, boys, I've been watching you, boys. Oh, uh, it's the floor walker. Floor walker? This guy is flying. <laughs> Now, look here, you two. Mrs. Niles asked me to tell you that unless you sell something to Miss Trevor immediately, you'll have to turn in your pencils and your Dixie cup. Oh, you kid! <laughs> uh, please, Miss Trevor, don't, don't make us lose our jobs. Yes, Miss Trevor, we've got to make at least one sale. How about some snowshoes? I never go out in the snow. Well, how about some sandals? I never go out in the sand. Oh, how about some Oxfords? I've never been out with an ox. Why don't you try it sometime? What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Let's go to Oxford! <laughs> Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Marine Second Lieutenant James D. Feltman of Baltimore, who won his commission by exceptional bravery in the South Pacific. While the corporal, Feltman was taken to a Japanese held island to remain for five days without any assistance from American forces. He obtained secret information established contact with our men at the end of the five days and was brought back to safety. In your honor, Marine Second Lieutenant James Feltman, the makers of camels are sending to our Marines in the Pacific 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel radio shows honors the Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas. A total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guests, Mr. Laird Craigar. And now here's Abbott and Costello with a final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, I suppose you know our guest next week will be Laird Craigar. Oh, yeah. I saw him in that baseball picture. The Dodger. No, you dummy. Not the Dodger. The Lodger. <laughs> the Dodger. Craigar played Jack the Ripper. He went around killing all those women. Don't you remember? Gee, we can't have that here, Abbott. I'd better warn all these women in the audience to stay away. And I'll have to warn little Connie Haynes to stay away, too. Uh, but what about Mrs. Niles? She'll be here. Yeah, that's right. I'd better warn Laird Krigar. Good night, folks. Good night, Good night everybody. Folks. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our special guest, Mr. Laird Craigar. Claire Trevor will soon be seen in the RKO picture, Farewell, My Lovely. And remember, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. This is Ken Niles wishing you a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. <laughs>